Pivot Cycles was founded in 2007 by Chris Kokalos. Before that, Chris already had an impressive background in the mountain bike industry, having founded and developed Titus Cycles into a highly sought after high end mountain bike brand. A year after selling Titus, Pivot was announced, and the big news was that Pivot had partnered with Dave Weigel to use the DW link. Until this point, DW was famous basically because it was on the Iron Horse Sunday, the DH race bike that Sam Hill used to dominate the World Cup DH race scene. At this point in mountain bike history, mid-2000s, there was very little appreciation for engineering of good suspension designs. Many product managers of big mountain bike companies were still trying to incorporate lockouts, gimmicks, or thought that flashy designs and sponsoring hotshot riders was the way to move ahead. If you brought up topics like wheel path, anti-squat, progressivity, or leverage ratios, I can only imagine they wouldn't have had a clue of what you were talking about. So while the other brands continued to produce pretty crappy full suspension designs, then sell those garbage bikes through aggressive marketing, Chris was on the phone with Dave Weigel getting a partnership going to raise the bar of what a light, efficient suspension bike would be. This is the vision behind the start of Pivot Cycles. The quality of the bike and quality of the ride have been paramount at Pivot since 2007. This is why Pivot is consistently regarded as one of the best high-end mountain bike brands out there. The new Pivot Trail 429. Officially released early in 2021, there have been very few of these released into the wild so far. This is both a pandemic thing and a bit of a trend with Pivot. I suspect the Pivot takes it easy on the first production of a new bike to make sure everything is perfect on the manufacturing side of things. That means a small first production run and probably dialing back production speed to make sure everything is perfect. The basics of this bike. It's a 120mm rear travel, 130mm travel fork. And in spite of coming from a high-end brand, it is not super light at 29 pounds for this Pro XT XTR build we're looking at today. This bike seems like it should be lighter, but I look at the spec and there are no shortcuts taken. Looking at the most similar high-end offering, the Santa Cruz Tallboy, it also sits right around the same 29 pounds with similar spec level and travel numbers. So I guess this means 29 pounds is about as light as a shred-ready trail bike gets without sacrificing ride performance or toughness. Changes from the previous model include the switch that all pivot bikes have taken over the last couple of years, the switch to a vertically mounted trunnion shock, longer reach, steeper seat tube angle, slacker head tube angle, but they haven't gone crazy with the updates. Head tube angle is now 66 degrees, seat tube angle 75 degrees, and reach on a size large is 470 millimeters. Chain stays are 430 millimeters long, which is on the short end of things these days, but that ensures an agile and maneuverable ride. These measurements are all in the lower setting, which it seems most people run in. Of note, the Trail 429 is one of the only bikes left that has made accommodations for 27.5 plus wheel tire combos, though there are no complete bikes offered in this wheel size. Two colors are available. We were lucky enough to have both colors in stock at the time of filming, so I've included clips of each. For those who care, the colors are called Pacific Blue and Silver Metallic. Pricing on this Pro XT XTR version is $94.50 Canadian or $72.99 US dollars. And yep, that is a lot of money, but yep, that is what a completely upspec bike costs when the focus is on overall quality rather than the best derailleur for the dollar. As mentioned, a special extra feature of this bike is the ability to be run as a 27.5 plus bike. To do so requires installing a 17mm rise bottom headset cup and flipping the frame's flip chip into the taller setting, which they call low rather than lower the usual setting. Plus tires are 2.8 inches wide, are typically run at pressures between about 14 and 20 psi, and can be a great comfort, confidence and traction booster. I'm a big fan of plus tires, and while the industry has all but stopped making plus bikes, there are a large number of e-bikes being offered with plus tires, so selection of rims and tires remains good. If you're looking to increase your skills, switching to plus tires for a year while you work on cornering technique is a really good trick. The confidence that your tires are not going to wash out while leaning the bike hard in corners really helps develop technique. Specifications. The rear derailleur is a Shimano XTR and of course it has a clutch mechanism which helps to keep the chain under control when riding bumpy terrain. The derailleur is moving the chain up and down the XT 12-speed cassette 
with tooth range from 10 to 51 teeth. Chain stay protection is impressive, with coverage up the bottom of the seat stay and even some coverage of the vertical member connecting the seat and chain stays. The chain ring and crank are race face Afect R. The chain ring is round, has nice 3D machining, it's not just a simple flat plate. Has narrow wide design and 32 teeth. Shifting is activated by a Shimano XT shift lever that is I-spec mounted to the XT brake lever. Shimano XT 4 piston brakes are an indication that Pivot is designing this bike to be ridden aggressively. Combined with the power of the 4 pistons, Pivot stocks the Trail 429 with 180mm Ice Tech rotors and finned brake pads. These features basically make the XT brakes perform better, especially on longer descents and help prolong brake pad life. These brakes are one of those areas where you see the difference between Pivot's focus on quality and some other brands that cut corners in areas that they think won't be noticed to bring the price down. These small features do make a big difference. Bars and Stam are both Pivot branded. Bars are carbon 780mm wide with a neutral feel, as in they feel pretty normal as far as rise and sweep are concerned. The stem is called the Phoenix Team Enduro Stem. The fact that the stem on our size large had a 65mm length is not very enduro at all. I suspect half the buyers out there will be thrilled to see something longer than a 35 or a 50mm stem, while the other half are going to immediately personalize this bike with a shorter stem. For fashion's sake alone, I would be switching to a 50mm stem. Grips are comfy, factory lock-on grips. They do wear out pretty quickly as a side effect of their gooey softness. Wheels are DT Swiss XM1700. The rims have 30mm internal width, and most important is that these include the 350 hub internals, meaning they use the Star Ratchet free hub design, this one with 36 teeth, one of the most trusted rear hub designs on the market. Having had rides ruined, missed days of road trips, and a serious injury due to rear hubs dying, I have a huge appreciation for high quality hubs. Tires are Maxxis Dissector 29x2.4 with XO casing, a well-respected tire known for fast rolling and decent quartering attributes, a very suitable tire for the bike. The exciting stuff, suspension. A highlight of the Pro model is that the fork, shock, and dropper are all Fox Factory, which adds Kashima coating to the Performance Elite level. Fork and shock are among the most tunable and reliable on the market. The factory DPS rear shock has three position level to switch from open to trail to firm for on-the-fly adjustment. There is even open mode adjust which gives three fine tuning options for how open the open position is. Being a bike with DW link means you would still get a very efficient ride with a simple shock without all the dials, but this is all about personalizing the feel for your riding style, terrain, weight and pedaling style. A favorite feature is the sag indicator, a very simple tool unique to pivots that makes shock setup really simple. The indicator relates to about a 31% sag measurement. The fork is a 130mm Fox Factory 34 with a grip 2 damper featuring high and low speed compression and rebound adjustment. The grip 2 is pretty much the benchmark for function and tunability these days. The Fox Transfer Factory Dropper Post has a nice remote lever of course, Kashima coating on the post and varies in drop amount by frame size, ranging from 125 millimeters on the size extra small up to 200 millimeters on the extra large. Of course, most importantly, it has a nice, very satisfying top out noise. Some final bits to mention. The rear hub uses 157 millimeter super boost hub spacing. While this is becoming more common, now seen on Da Vinci, Evil, and Noli bikes, to name a few at least, it still isn't as common as 148mm boost. So if you have a fancy set of wheels you want to transfer from bike to bike, this is a tad frustrating. It is, however, a better system. Super boost allows for better chain line, stronger wheels, and stiffer frames while allowing the rear end of the bike to be pretty short while allowing larger volume tires. Lastly, we can't talk about a pivot without mentioning the frame. The fit and finish quality is about as good as it gets. Attention to detail at the cable ports makes running cables pretty straightforward, while being unguided inside the frame means no ugly rooting for people who run their brakes moto. Those ports can also be used to cinch the cable to reduce how much they can rattle within the frame. There is occasional mention on media tests of pivots about noisy cables. That can be mitigated 
by putting foam tubes over the cables and ho hoses within the frame, another benefit of those large cable ports. A cool thing to note about the pivot frames is that they alter their carbon layup for each frame size to match the stiffness with anticipated rider weight, so each size gets the same feel for the rider. The frame uses SRAM's new universal rear derailleur hanger, so tracking down a hanger should be straightforward. Frame protection is impressive, I have to say it again. The down tube protection and the way it wraps around at the BB is amazing. I've already talked about the uh, protection at the chain stay and seat stay. It is like nothing else on anything else. And it really shows that Pivot wants your Trail 429 to keep looking beautiful and riding quietly for a long time. The last thing I have to mention is Pivot's pivots and bearings. After a summer of test riding a number of bikes, I'm amazed at how many bikes had issues with bearings that were blowing up fast or pivots that were coming loose too easily, easily, even within a ride. So for pivots, and a number of us have ridden them long term, um, we've literally not seen any issues with bearings dying or with pivot bolts coming loose yet. This is such a huge deal. So, the wrap up. Sizing. There are five sizes available, extra small through extra large in the Trail 429. Extra small fits 411 to about 54, small 54 to 59, medium 58 to 511, large 510 to 62, and then extra large 62 to 6 foot 5. Remember that these days there's a lot more variability in what people are choosing to ride. So if you're looking for a really nimble bike, you're sizing down. If you're looking for ultra stable, you're sizing up. So keep that in mind. This isn't all about ergonomics. It's got so much more to do with how a bike actually rides. Who is the Pivot Trail 429 for? Well, people with a few bucks to spare, I guess. There's no way escaping that this is a lot of money. This is for the dedicated rider, the kind of person who mountain biking has become their primary hobby. Otherwise, maybe you're just somebody who's doing really well for yourself. You might even be, wait for it, a dentist? Riders of all sizes. This is a great bike for shorter riders, so keep that in mind if you're under 5'5"-ish. Some bikes tend not to fit that great, especially in the full suspension realm. So shorter riders especially get along really well with the way Pivot designs their frames. This bike will suit recovering XC racers looking for a more forgiving bike capable of long days on more demanding terrain. People who want a daily driver capable of something like a BC bike race. The progressive but not overly progressive geometry is great for long days because when riders get tired they often stop using ideal technique. So those super slack bikes, not so perfect if you're doing marathon races. This guy, perfect. The last category is basically the super skilled rider. They're going to be looking at this bike as a way to underbike, to ride a bike with 120, 130 travel as a short travel free ride bike. Those people do exist and it is a capable enough bike to do that sort of stuff. So who this bike isn't for? People seeking ultralight XC race bikes. While the travel is similar to bikes like the Scott Spark, that one's designed for World Cup XC racing and they've done a lot of things to shave off weight. Those are steps that make the bike much less trail worthy, while the Pivot is all aimed at trail riding. The Mach 4 SL from Pivot would be the option for that. If the terrain you ride is mostly steeps and chunky, well, you're probably going to be better off on a longer travel trail or even an enduro bike. A slacker bike with more forgiveness would be more appropriate for that. One adage. In times like these where some riders seek the shortest travel bike for gnarly terrain is that the bikes are great until they aren't. The realization is often made in non-stop chunder descents when you realize a shorter travel bike like this gets to a certain point where braking and contact with the ground just kind of disappear. So keep that in mind. That is it, the Pivot Trail 429. An awesome bike put together really well with great spec front to back. If you like these videos, give us a follow. 22 is just around the corner and we will be trying to cover as many of the new 2022 models as possible as they come out. Everything from price point hardtails and city bikes to top of the line enduro bikes. If we sell them, we'll likely do a review on them. Thanks again. I'm Graham. Our shop is Bike Bros. We're located in Cochrane, Alberta, Canada. 
We sell Marin, Rocky Mountain, Pivot, Giant, Esker, and there might even be some new things added in 2022. Happy trails, and hopefully we'll see you in the shop someday. Cheers. Cheers.